It's okay, this is a little speed test. I'll just go full on. <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is unreal. Unreal. What people can do home is unbelievable. I love 21st century. <laughs> this is a real test of range per charge. I took a different approach than other manufacturers by designing a smaller and lighter battery with fast charging. The battery is fully charged in 90 minutes. Most of the time I don't discharge more than 60% either. Not because I don't want to, it's because this is how I use the bike. This is plenty of capacity for me. I ended up with 78 kilometers per charge, which surprised me a lot. Okay, low speeds and a climbing up the hills, especially combined, is always the worst thing for your controller and motor that you can do. They overheat constantly. So let's take a look at this real test how this bike is gonna perform on this difficult terrain going up the hill the entire time. Let's take a look. <laughs> That'll be fun. So in the right bottom corner you see temperature of the motor and temperature of the controller. So let's take a look how it can handle this. <laughs> Don't even have time to look at a to look at a phone to see what the temperature is. But so far no limits. Okay, we have 65 on a motor. That's fine because limit it starts limiting when it reaches 120 degrees. That's fine. And controller, I think now currently I've set on 60 degrees Celsius, I think. But don't forget, this is a real test of controller being inside of the frame, no ventilation. Ah, oh, looks like almost there. <laughs> no limit so far. <laughs> you can see, I can still go full on. No limits at all. <laughs> this is so much fun. Eighty degrees Celsius, and this was intense. Look at that controller. <laughs> Thirty-five degrees is just nice and warm. I don't think you know. I don't think I can overheat this setup. <laughs> it's a summertime in Romania. It's pretty warm. So yeah, here you have it. Let's take a look at brakes. So here on the left side, on the thumb, I have regenerative braking. And here I personally have mechanical rear brake and mechanical front brake. So let's take a look if I get some speed, uh, how strong regenerative braking actually is. So now I'm braking full on. And you can see this is nothing extreme. This is nothing that would be able to do um, emergency braking. I use my region 80% of the time because this is non-friction braking and it also recharges the battery. My mechanical brakes though, it's usually as you can see now for stop, just to stop the bike or in a case I have emergency braking. So let's take a look how fast I can brake from uh, this speed. This is pretty good, <laughs> this is pretty good. This is good emergency braking because I'm braking on the edge of skidding. I love it, I think these brakes are ideal for the weight of the bike and the rider. I'm very happy and there is nothing what I would change at this point. Because this regenerative braking charges my battery. I can only feed a battery with so much power. So I can anytime increase the intensity of of the brake but it's in exchange that I would be stressing my battery a little bit more so that only depends on your C rating on your batteries but on my setup I'm fine with this intensity because I always have strong mechanical brakes look how responsive it is it's like immediately you know immediately lifts it up I absolutely love this uh, phone as a main screen 
for multiple reasons. So I can really open my maps that I use on a daily basis to navigate me from places. We travel a lot, so I usually don't know local, local roads and local places. I know it's a little bit obsessive, but I really like knowing what's going on with my emails, if somebody calls me and, and uh, everything. So I immediately get instant notifications, right? So I everything see real time what's happening. Sometimes I write uh, with my headphones in a helmet. So I just have my uh, music app and <laughs> I think I just think this is the coolest possible way at this stage. We'll see what the manufacturers will bring following years, but I think this is pretty this is pretty epic. I'm gonna demonstrate a sh uh, schlumpf drive. So if I point it down, if I point it down, I usually go with my heel like this, boop, and look how I'm pedaling and how fast I go now. And if I change the gear to the high speed, kick, look at that, look at that speed now. So this is more practical speed because it allows me pedal, as I said, up to 80 kilometers an hour. And from my experience, the most, uh, the most used speed really or range is somewhere between 40 and, and 70 probably. I would say that's my most common speed high ride. So that's cool because I can pedal all the time, look. If you have average DIY skills and tools like solder, wrenches, a drill or hex keys, you should be able to build one like this too. It took me 12 days and cost 3,600 US dollars. I'm offering the parts list containing over 80 parts. 52 are essential to build an e-bike just like this. The rest are extra accessories I recommend using. In my four hour video guide, I show, explain and educate you how to build this e-bike from all the parts on the list. This video guide includes diagrams for a battery you can custom order from any local store. You also receive constant updates on parts or inventions, such as this built-in charger that I've been working on and it will be online soon. I don't build e-bikes for customers, instead I provide info on how to build one yourself. If you don't feel confident enough to build it and you would rather buy a finished e-bike with warranty, a friend of mine can build you a similar model for 6,000 US dollars. Send me an email and I'll give you his contact info, but he only ships within Europe. Exciting news is that my website is coming soon, but up until then, email me to get info about the parts list and the video guide. If you want to support these videos and my e-bike developments, you can do in two ways. First, don't skip ads on my channel that contributes immediately, instantly. Second, subscribe to our Patreon account, link down below. You can also check more videos on my channel and practice there not skipping ads. Thanks again for watching. I hope you like this honest review. I absolutely love this e-bike and I'll keep making more videos. See you soon.